hello everyone um welcome to our webinar um i think uh, we'll, we'll have some people joining we, we're going to send a, a recording of this out afterwards um which will be hosted on our website with some more information so um, we'll be able to share that um so good good to Good to meet everyone. Um, as you can see, people are still coming in now. Um, what we're going to do today is to talk about one of our products, um, our EMIS Dockman filing product, or our Dockman MyBot GP filing product. Uh, one of our range of products that we've built here uh, specifically for primary care um, under the MyBot GP range. Um, we're going, I'll do a quick introduction as to who we are. Uh, a quick overview as to how MyBot GP works, where it lives, how it interacts with the different, with how it interacts with you on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, how it recognizes letters, um, and how you tell it what to do with letters. Um, we can have a quick skim over the business case, which I think all of you are aware of, which is which is why you're on this call. Uh, quite how many how many letters and how much time it takes you to process letters. Um, we can go through the our brochure very quickly, which my colleague kindly shared with you all in advance of this, um, and we can show you a short demo as well um, what i would like to be able to do as long as we have enough time but but usually we do because i speak quite quickly um is to answer any questions that you may have as well at the end of the call so if you have questions please pop them in the chat um, and we'll get to them as as, as quickly as, as we can both sanjeev and i um we'll run through the presentation today uh, and the webinar today and and um you know please pop questions in and, and, and we'll answer anything that that we can um if you have any questions after the webinar you've got our email addresses um and obviously as i said before we'll send you a copy of the webinar and all the details so you know please please get in contact so for those of you who aren't already using our normal pathology filing product um for for our mybot gp normal filing pathology product which is uh, live in emis and tpp um i'll quickly skim over um how it works, what it does, and, and the, 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 the principles behind the MyBot GP range. Um, it's also good to drop in this conversation now as well to let you all know that we will shortly be live with a repeat prescription uh, MyBot GP. Uh, that should, the official launch for that should be in the next couple of weeks, and there'll be information on our website um, pertaining to the logic around how that works. Uh, but we'll cover that off in a separate webinar next month uh, or the month after. So what is my bot? Who, who are we? So we're, we're an automation specialist. We build products for, for primary care and the MyBot GP range are downloadable products uh, that are quick to download uh, and easy to configure. Um, the reason that, that we built the MyBot GP range is you have, you know, six and a half thousand practices uh, all doing the same thing in a slightly different way. So you need a tool that you can uh, manipulate yourself at practice level uh, to replicate how you're working at the moment. And that's what MyBot GP is. And, and, and what I mean by that is you all are receiving thousands of letters a year um, and you all will, everyone on this call from a different practice will have uh, potentially a different uh, protocol or different workflows in place uh, to determine how those letters are processed, how they're valid Dated, who they're sent to uh, and what actions are, are, are taken off the back of them. Um, to make things clear at the beginning of the call, this uh, MyBot GP is not here to replace any clinical decision making. We are not attempting to make clinical decisions based on reading two paragraphs of or one paragraph or three paragraphs of free text. What this tool does is completely completely eliminate the administrative side of of uh, of this workflow for you by picking up all of the letters and again we'll cover this in more detail but essentially picking up all of the letters validating all of the letters in terms of the patient letter type um, coding the letters in, in terms of how to get them onto the system and triaging them to the appropriate person so for our clients already using Dotman, that could be any combination of deciding what letters you don't need to see that are filed straight away deciding which letters are sent to uh, your coding team if you have one depending on what permissions they're given to code if they are given permissions to code or triaging off to the pharmacy team or, or to particular clinics Definitions. Think of it as a roundabout that looks at each letter that comes into the practice. You tell it what you want to do with that letter and it will do it every single time without making a mistake and you won't have to do it anymore. So um, we were part of an innovation launchpad program uh, funded by NHS, by the NHS and government. Um, 
we're, we're quite quite proud of that um, and completed that last year and their purpose is to help launch companies producing uh, innovative products uh, in in tech um, this product uh, for those of you that uh, that are uh, have an awareness of more the security type of things and validation type of things it's important to say that mybot gp uh, for document has a dcb0129 that's this here uh, it's a clinical risk certification that's voluntary uh, what this means is we have a clinician who is part of our team who's done additional uh, cso clinical safety training who's validated our tool so according to nhs standards um, that's a, pre that's a, a prerequisite and, and my boy GP has that. Uh, we've got a lot of experience at working in primary care, um, practice PCN federation level, uh, hence the my boy GP range, which is why we built out um, products that can be bespoke at practice level. So if my boy GP is acquired by a PCN, um, you can centralize all of your uh, uh, coding rules. If you have a hub um, and it can process everything through there, or if you're working individually, it can be tailored at practice level. Okay, we obviously, it goes without saying, otherwise there'd be no point in existing uh, to say that we don't, that, that we have uh, DPIAs, uh, data sharing agreements where appropriate. So how does it work? And I'm gonna ask my colleague Sanjeev to uh, support this with me um, and, and run through the demo in a moment. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, is skim through very quickly how the product works, the logic taken behind it, um, and then we'll move into a demo in a moment. So what happens is my, my bot GP, think of it as a person, um, you've given this person permission uh, to and you've trained them in how to recognize letters from document, how to validate them and, and how to uh, complete the appropriate templates. Um, it lives on a computer. Uh, that computer can be hosted, meaning it can uh, live in the sky or in principle, it's security permitting it could live at practice level. Uh, it has a, a, a login for document and it can log into document uh, and it will look for the letters it's been given permission to, to uh, apply rules to, to, to validate and then triage to the appropriate people um, and it will omit the ones it hasn't given permission. And I'll show you how you train, we'll show you how you train it in a moment. So it works and, and the way that it would work, it has a full audit trail as well, which we'll cover off in a moment. Um, and it would and it will work off of its own username and password uh, for Docman, so that so it's nice and clean. You can see exactly what it's touched. Uh, the automation piece of this tool is really only the final piece, which is how it actually pushes the letters through the system. Um, but this is a highly uh, bespoke, complex filing tool, um, which is self-configurable at practice level practice level, meaning you can tell it where to send the letters and audit that, that happens to use some automation to push it through the system. So think of it as a, an, an automated product rather than automation uh, in, in, its, in its generalized sense. This is a bespoke built product. So it works with or without IntelliSense, operates securely um, with, with MFA, multi-factor authentication. So essentially that means it will send you an email to validate a login. Uh, and that's a new prerequisite from, from your ICBs as of a couple of months ago. Uh, MyBot GP can work 24-7, 365, uh, ensuring everything is processed straight away. Uh, it doesn't make mistakes. Once you've taught it what to do with the letter, uh, it will always do that. Um, obviously no more delays or, or maxed out administration teams or queues of unfiled letters. Also included in our package, it's, it's unlimited pages and unlimited letter types for, for one subscription cost. So just as an example, an average GP practice, if we take it slightly bigger than an average GP practice at 9,000 patients, will receive approximately 95 letters a day. So believe it or not, that works out to 29,640 letters per year, every year uh, that you are currently processing, getting onto the system, validating, even if you're using IntelliSense, uh, that still needs to be checked and superseded, getting onto the system uh, and then triaging to the appropriate team uh, to action. It's a lot of letters. So even if you took it that each letter took two and a half minutes, you're looking at hundreds, uh, well over a thousand hours a year. Um, processing these uh, the, the letters, uh, notwithstanding people are away, uh, people leave, queues, busy times, um, you know, and different and different practices around the countries have, have, have got different approaches to how they validate the letters in terms of who they have doing that. Do you have coding teams that have given permission to to medically code, uh, or are they acting more as a triage, uh, or could they be uh, addressing tasks instead of just reading letters? 
So the way that it works is it plugs directly into Document and manages all incoming letters. Uh, it can read all PDFs, all scan copies, uh, and we've also have given it the ability now to read email. So as you start to receive uh, more documentation by email, uh, MyBot GP will be able to process those as well. And what does it do? Essentially, this is the form that you're all completing. Going by the example before of an average of 95 letters a day, this is being completed just under 30,000 times a year. You're taking the information from the letter and you're validating it so that you can complete this, this uh, uh, template accurately each time, every time. So, so essentially, what does that mean? Um, it means my bot GP will, will review and validate the letters. It will validate the patient by NHS number by reading the letter and validating it in document. It will validate the document type and complete the template, i.e. diabetes cardiology. My bot GP will also categorize the letter by applying all of the document relevant information for each document, which is up to 12 fields. Uh, that includes event date, organization, hospital name, clinical code to categorize the letter, as we touched on before, not diagnose, and create a review, read code, and assign to the patient record. Obviously, as we touched on before, you can also at, at letter level or folder level, you can make a decision as to where you want the letters sent, which is super important. Some of our clients are triaging letters off to, to, to multiple different people. Before we get onto the demo, I think it's really important to show you the analytics dashboard. So one of the advantages of starting to use tooling like this is you get a full audit log of, of, of everything that you're doing. Uh, so anything that my bot GP uh, filters on, anything that it processes, uh, it keeps a copy of, a very accurate copy. Um, and that you and you'll receive an email at the end of every day saying what's been processed in terms of letter types, volumes, categories. Um, and then obviously within the application itself is a more detailed granular approach where you can click on each letter uh, and have a full audit lock as to link it to the patient, what rules were applied, and, and where it lives. By this example, what it's saying is, is filed a number. Is it saying it's filed 11 letters? And at the bottom, you can see these letters haven't been filed, um, and because it's not been given permission to file them, um, being given to file them means essentially shown what to do. And it takes about 45 seconds to a minute to process each letter, to teach it to process each letter once. And then the second time it sees that letter, it, it won't ask you again. So essentially, coming back to this slide here, and we'll show you in the demo, you show it where the NHS number is, you show it where the patient where the patient details are, show it where the uh, hospital name is, uh, document type is, uh, um, event date, clinical code, department, organisation for each letter, and it will look on the page as to where you've told it that that detail is and it can perform a generalized search, pick it up, complete the template and validate it. So one of the advantages of this is if you have multiple uh, letter types that relate to the same task or to the same outcome, uh, that's not an issue for my bot GP. You'll just show each of those letters and say every time you see this letter, this is what I want you to do with it and it will do that every time. So one of the questions we get asked um, a lot is who is how long does it take and who should actually code the letters well it doesn't take very long to code the letters but but the way that it works is that once you start to use it um, whoever isn't going to make a mistake obviously whoever's got the most experience will code the letters for the first time exactly what you're doing now no different uh, and then the second time it won't ask you and that will be locked into the logic so every time it sees that letter it will perform that function um, and, and the logic is essentially to, to minimize the um, minimize the amount of time you spend doing this. So free up the time of the coding team so that they can focus on coding rather than uh, cutting and pasting, which is essentially what we're, what we're doing. So what we've done with MyBot GP is show you how to sort of make best use of automation um, from removing some very repetitive work. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm going to see if anyone's got any questions um, very quickly, and then we'll move to the, the demo. So if I just pull up this screen here, Sanj, has there been any questions? 
Oh, there's some questions here. Fine. Oh, there's a lot of. Okay, I got this now. Okay. Uh, yes, someone's talking about a computer closing down. Uh, can we be sent a recording? Yes, no problem. Uh, no sound yet. I'm hopefully that's working. Yep, sound is working. Uh, will this product be available within TPP or is it just within EMIS? Yes, it's coming within TPP. That's currently in build. We hope to have that live within the next couple of months. Uh, from an IG risk standpoint, what would be the potential mitigations for the risk details if a letter is missed or misunderstood, leading to the letter being incorrectly filed, ultimately having an impact on patient care? 100%. That's covered off in our DCB 0129. Happy to have a, a call around that. Uh, separately um, or, 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 or as a group. Um, there are full audit logs with MyBot GP, so you are able to go back and validate each letter as per our DCB 0129. Uh, and needless to say, I mean, it's a, a very, very powerful question. All tooling for primary care is not just plug in and never look at again. Um, you, you know, if you when you start to use automation tooling, you do need to think at practice level how you manage that tool, do sporadic checks, uh, spot checks to determine that everything is, is working as you hoped it would. Um, I'll get through as many of these as I can and then we'll jump back into the demo and then we'll come back again afterwards. So again, is there a, a larger PCN discount, for example, a weighted population of 100,000 plus? I can come back to that question. Uh, how does it cope with duplicates, patient no longer registered or reject these? I'll cover off the first one. Um, so if it sees a letter that's not valid, it will be left. Duplicates, we, we don't touch. It's too complicated for us to start uh, removing duplicates. Again, coming back to the, the question before, uh, because then we're, we're removing letters from your system. So that's, that's essentially not safe. Um, with a reduced footprint of time that your, that your team is, is uh, allocating to this task, they will manage that as they are now. Um, da -da -da, does it fall? Okay, let me, just, let, me just get back into, um, let me just get back into the demo because I think a lot of these uh, questions can be answered from the demo. But just quickly before I do, does it file or does it highlight actions as well? Um, so it will pick up the letter, it will uh, validate the letter, which is which is pretty complex. It will categorize the letter, it will, it will add it to the system and it will triage it to the appropriate person. Um, there are some tools out there that will highlight particular keywords and things like that. We haven't, we haven't done that um, because in reality, you'd need to read the whole letter as it is. So we don't believe that's the biggest time saving. We believe the biggest time saving is creating a, a robust tool that will 100% every time pick up the letter, validate the letter correctly, distribute it to the, the appropriate person, categorize the letter, and produce you an extremely comprehensive audit report so you can go back and, and validate that everything is working correctly from an IG perspective um, as per our DCB 0129. So um, can it sit on the same computer as MyBot GP pathology? Uh, it can live on the same computer. We just get through these and then I'll, I'll come back. Uh, how is the data stored? Nothing leaves your practice. Everything is, is saved at your practice. So let me just jump into the demo now very quickly. Um, I'll stop sharing for a moment and I'll open the demo and then we can come back to that and we'll jump back into the questions again afterwards. So open here i'll hand over to my colleague in a moment um, who will uh, run the demo for us and um, good questions by the way please keep putting them in um we sure. like we like questions so it's also nice to see um a lot of familiar faces or, or names on on this webinar of people that we've spoken with before or current clients so um hello everyone so my bot GP here, uh, if I come to the document workflow here, demo. So I'm gonna mute now, um, which is challenging for me. Uh, and I'm gonna pass over to my colleague Sanj um, oh, and he's gonna tell me when to start and stop. This, am I starting with this one, Sanj? Yes, please, yeah, that'll yes, be good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm okay. gonna mute and I'll hand over to Sanj for a minute uh, okay. and then we'll come back. Okay, so let's just, Play it. So what we're going to show today now is the ability to just stop it here and I'll just run through. So this is um, this is my GP. This is the document panel. Um, essentially, what this is is the ability to train all letter types and NHS mails and PDFs and scans, etc. So any any document coming in into into document that you want to run through the platform, um, as, as James said, to get it 
the sign to get it get it put against the actual patient record. Um, this is where you actually train it. It's a self-configuring platform. You can put unlimited documents, NHS mails, PDF scans through the platform. Um, there's a period of learning, for, for want of a better word. What you'll do is you'll download a representative example of each document, and you will literally upload them into this platform. And then there are, what we've done is made it very simple. There are essentially five steps. Uh, to complete for MyBot GP to learn everything it needs in order to file that document within Docman. Now, as part of those steps, you, you know what what we're trying to uh, what we're doing is we're we're training MyBot GP to you know pick up things like you know organisation. So so it's so it knows uh, which organisations to look for. It you're, you're training, for example, where to pick up NHS number. You're you're training in how to classify the document, and then you give the uh, the additional fields um, that that you would normally apply manually in terms of, you know, where you put things in like event date, clinical code, create review, and, and all things like that. And I can take you through the gears of how, how of how one does that. So, if we start on the top left hand corner, uh, in this in this example, I've loaded five documents. So we can see that there are dermatology, plastic surgery, neurology. Again, it can be anything: emergency discharge letters, oncology, gynaecology. Again, any every every single letter. Uh, can be uploaded into this um, into the platform. It's all about how you classify that letter. Okay, so the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to say, tell my bot, my bot GP, we're going to classify this letter. So if we just play this on, James. We're going to classify this letter as an ENT letter. I think this one first one is. Okay, now we told my bot GP every time you see this letter, this is going to be an ENT letter. And the reason how it will know to do that is within the letter there are keywords which will which will associate with this. Uh, document type, which is an e ENT clinical letter. It's actually redacted, and hence that's why you can't see it in the top left-hand corner. But effectively, the way one categorizes a letter, either it's through the document it's through the document title search, or actually just giving it a keyword. So you've told MyBot GP, every time you see the words ENT clinic letter, this is going to be that document type. And the reason why we we, we classify, categorize a letter, because as you know, you have to give it the, the fields um, that how you want to file it, i.e. a description, the organization, the department, the create review, the clinical codes, and all of those resulting fields um, are, are then mapped back to this, in this example, ENC letter. Sorry, James, you're going to... I was just going to say, just to, just, just to add in here, do you want to mute for a second? That, that, um, this has obviously been anonymized. One of our clients gave us permission to um, to, to, to share this for demo purposes, hence why why you can see some blurry stuff, and that will be in the in in the actual demo where you see the automated piece of this product a, a bit later on as well. Um, so it comes back to where Sandra was saying, where did we get ENT letter from? It's it's redacted. I believe it's actually on the top right hand corner, and you'll see that in the in the live demo. But Sandra, I'll, I'll pass that back over to you now. Thanks, James. So if we just play it on um, a little bit to step two. Gone. Just go back a touch. Just tell me to hit stop. Oh, so we've done the ENT letter. So we've categorized the letter now. So every time my bot GP sees this letter, it knows exactly what, what this letter type is. Um, so if we just pause for the next to stop there. So now what we're doing, and, and the way that the platform works, it's got a, a point and click type functionality. So there's very complex algorithms algorithms behind the scene. So what we're telling MyBot GP is that where do I roughly approximately pick up NHS number? So if we just play it on here and we're going to do one of two things here. We're going to tell it where to pick up NHS number. You then validate the actual NHS number to make sure it's picking up the right one and then event date. Now again, just pause it there. So just, there, there you go. So you've got the ability, as you know, on, on, on medical type letters, there are there are numerous dates which are populated on, on, on the letter. Now, what you're telling my bot GP is where to pick up a, a event date from. So is it the first one? Is it the second one? Um, again, you'll point and click and show my bot GP where uh, where event date it comes uh, you know comes through on this actual formatted letter. Okay, so there's there's multiple ways you can configure this as well. Okay, so just stop there. So now the next. Step, which is step three, is uh, we give a list of the organizations, essentially a list of all the organizations that you would expect to receive letters from. So this would be, again, all of the hospitals and consultants and so forth. You would give that list. That could be 10, 12 organizations. And, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to come in. It's going to 
it's going to pick up the actual letter, it's going to classify the letter, it's going to extract NHS number, it's going to, it, it knows where to pick up event date, and then it's also going to pick up the organization in the top right hand corner, and then it's going to validate that against the list that you've told it. Okay, so we just play that along. You would then give for this ENT letter, you would then give it the actual department that you want to map it to. We just pop that in there. And then again, as you can start to see, if we just pause that there, James, we, what we can start to see is all of these fields are exact mirror of what you would manually type in when you were filing this letter within Dotman. So you would then give, for this ENC letter, you would give template, you would give description, folder, notes, tags. And again, it's all optional. Um, it's basically whatever you want to, to, to apply uh, when MyBot GP is actually filing the letter. So we just play that on. So we can see here we're, we're pretty much on step four. And so again, I want it to put, put the words ENT clinical letter in description. Notes I want to leave as is. Tags I want to leave as is. So if we just stop hit change. So again, create review. So again, as you know, you can then start asking my about GP to create a task. And the, the way you would do that is you would essentially assign a create review and you would drop, you know, you would put in the, the name of the, the task of who you want it to, to create tasks for. So again, just a simple mapping and making sure that that value is within the create review field in, in my book, in, in, sorry, in document. Okay, so that would create a task for this particular letter based on what you put here. Um, and if we play it on again, again, clinical code, you would then map the clinical code, whatever that is, for ENT and then person. The same, it's the same identical fields that you would apply in document. And that's it. And that's step five of five completed. OK, so as you can see, it's the same process that you would apply, um, whether it's for NHS mails, PDS scans, it's unlimited, it's self-configuring. The way it works is MyBot GP will then be pointed to look at the not in folder. You can point it to look at a, a different folder if you so wish. It will come in, it will it will log into MyBot, it will log into document, it will it will go to the actual not in folder. It will pick up the first document. It will then say, OK, in my brain, I've got 50, 60 documents trained. Are you one of those? OK, it's classified that letter. It's found the keyword or how you told it to, to categorize that letter. It's then going to pick up NHS number. It's then going to validate um, event date based on where you've told it to. It's then going to validate which organization based on the list that you've actually supplied it within the platform. It's then going to look to then paste in the values, literally, of what you've told it, how you file that letter, and or create a task based on that letter. And you can see ENT Clinic letter was the first one. Okay. Thanks, Nigel. Can I just jump in for a moment? Yeah, sure. Okay, just, just, just to add, so from our experience at working um, in, in primary care, and it was the main reason why we built MyBot GP. Um, one of the biggest USPs is, is being able to decide what you want to do at practice level for each letter, as we touched on before. Um, we've seen firsthand, um, not only do you all do the same thing in a slightly different way, you actually do it quite differently. <laughs> so not a slightly different way, a very different way. So it's really important that you have a tool which you can manipulate uh, to, to, to replicate your own protocols at practice level. Sanj, and, and just after this demo, can uh, talk a bit more around where the letters are sent, folders, people, all that type of stuff. Um, in addition, you, your letter formats change on a regular basis. The way that you receive uh, letters changes. Um, that needs to be able to be accommodated for. And also, you may change your mind how you want to process letters at practice level. Um, so the advantage of having a tool which you look after, it's yours, and is quite easy to train. I mean, it's literally 45 seconds to a minute once you've had to, had a bit of experience to teach it to see each letter just once. Uh, it means you can go back in and change it at any moment. And, and you change it once, and then the automation tool will continue to just uh, action it, validate it, triage it, send it, um, you know, set a task to the appropriate people. Uh, so it's not a, a product um, that you buy um, and then you're stuck with the rules or stuck with the configuration uh, from some time back. You can you can have full ownership over of it. Um, and that's huge um, in terms of automation for, for primary care. Uh, it, it, you know, Sanjay, I'll, I'll pass this back to you. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I think you, you said it, it's scheduled to run at the frequency that you want it so again seven you know we've got clients running it sort of five six seven times a day on a round robin basis 
uh, giving it sort of two, three hours to run. It starts at nine and starts up at 12, three, six, nine, to right, literally running through the, the day and night on a seven day cycle. Um, as you know, it's clearing out this backlog. So, you know, clients who've got hundreds and hundreds of letters coming in on Monday morning, again, that's gone because essentially it's grabbed them, it's 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 filed it and it's put it against the actual patient record. So again, that, that's a win. Um, so it's really about what does it do? As I say, it does that first piece it's validating are you uh, are you a, are you a correct letter is that and it's just number correct yes it is okay then it will start to go through the actual process of categorizing it and then applying the the values that you've told it to so just before we just before science talks you through this piece here which is essentially um you'll, you'll see the tool working again it's been anonymized one of our clients kindly kindly let us share this um think of the numbers i i think you know we talk to lots of people here and there's people quite often aren't aware of the sheer volume of, of letters that you're processing. These aren't made up numbers, they're, they're, they're easily accessible online. You know, an, an approximate number of a, of a, of a list, of, a practice list of 9,000 patients will be receiving give or take 95 letters a day, six days a week. And people often say six days, not five days. It's like, yes, because you know, you're, you're receiving letters on a Saturday and a Sunday. 95 letters a day equates to 29,640 letters per year, every year. Uh, you've got highly specialized teams at the practice who've got other work they can be doing. Um, you know, you've got growing lists, aging populations. Um, this, this is a way to free up um, anywhere between you know, two to two to three minutes per letter. Yes, some people can file four letters in, in six minutes, um, but they can't do that every day, all day, 12 months a year. It's just not a reality. People don't work that way. Automation tools work that way. It will always take the same amount of time to file each letter. It won't have a break between each letters and it will work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, constantly cleaning, 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 up, uploading, emptying the inbox, getting everything onto the system, validating it, creating tasks, categorizing and triaging to the appropriate people, constantly cleaning in the background. Um, this is a type of tooling that, that, that unfortunately primary care hasn't been able to use um, because you are quite um, behind with the systems that you use, old computers and uh, grumpy internet connections have sort of held you back from making best use of automation tooling. But the good news is, is that is finishing now um, and we're entering a new phase of, of, of IT for primary care. Um, starting with tooling like this, where you can start to actually take advantage of, of, of automation tools that can just remove the repetitive uh, tasks. And repetitive doesn't mean basic. Repetitive means you're, you're using highly complex rules um, that can be enforced and can run in the background. It's just someone else is doing them for you. Um, you know, imagine Superman in the background working 24 7 365 with a specific set of instructions it's like a person just just ticking over and ticking over filing 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 in the background so you don't have to do it so this is quite a quick demo um which is good because because we'll leave some time for questions at the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it and I'm just going to let Sanj uh, just talk through this really quickly um you're not going to see rockets and and, and fireworks and and, and all flashing things on the screen. What you're going to see is 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 my bot GP doing the filing. It's it's looking for the letters yeah. it's been given permission to look at. It's validating them and it's pushing them through the let through the system. Um, and going on the top left, you can see ENT letter. So that was the the redacted letter. Obviously, we've just left ENT so you can validate it from the previous letter. So I'm going to play this and pause it and, and play and pause. I'll let Sans jump in uh, and then we'll round off um, we can talk about the business case in more detail coming back to this, you know, 29,640 letters a year for, for a 9,000 list. Um, yeah, we've got clients with lists double that and and half that. It's, it's the same calculation, but that volume of letters is still um, managed by the equivalent number of people. So, you know, if you've got four people and you're a smaller site, you'll have two people. It's still the same volumes of work. So I'm going to play this now, Sanjay. Thank you. Sir. Sure. Um, yeah. So, so the way it's working is, I mean, you can just pause it there. I've just got a couple of things. So the way the way my my bot GP works is, can, if if no one's sort of seen automation, literally you give it username and password. It logs in just like a user. It navigates to Docwin as a as as per, uh, as a user would. It, it, as you can see, it's logged in. It's 
it's been given a username and password. It's navigated to, to the actual uh, Notting folder screen. And then, right, so as soon as it's on the Notting folder, it's got all of that logic and all of the, the, the training that you've, you've given it. So all of the document types and the classifications are all in its brain. So then it will start to get to work, essentially. It's really important to, to as, as James has been saying, what does this tooling do? It, it's simply doing, it's doing, well, not simply, it's doing the administrative layer, which is that, you know, two to three minute time saving per letter. It's validating the NHS number. You know, if there are inactive patients or deceased patients, it skips them. It doesn't do that, but it does record those, the, 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 those ones which it can't process in the very detailed and comprehensive audit logs and, and reporting, which is done sort of once it's completed its cycle. Um, so if it's in its brain, it will process it. It will filter on the first letter, and then again, it will then it will go back to what you've trained it, and then look to apply the fields um, which you've told it within the platform. Okay. Now, in terms of prerequisites, you can see there on the left hand side there's a my.gp exceptions folder. So where it has not come up against, where um, you haven't trained it on a specific letter type, it will then kick those out to the exceptions folder. And what you will see is um, any of any ones which you can't train, you would literally download them and then literally train them back into MyBotGB to bring that exceptions folder. And then also you will have general, genuine exceptions, like I said, in terms of deceased or inactive and things like that, or ones that it couldn't process, it would pop them simply into exceptions. And the, the SOP, the standard operating procedure, which we advocate, is that would then be checked on a daily basis in terms of which ones we either need to be trained through the system or actioned manually, which you've, made, which you've made the decision not to put through the platform for whatever reason. Okay, so that's the that's the way it will work on a daily basis. Um, so James, you can you can play it. Okay, so okay. jump in for one second. Just just before um, we go into the into the the, the the second demo. So the way that people tend to go live with this is you you give us a bunch of your your letters and obviously we'll we'll code them. Um, we run we run uh, uh, training programs. We have monthly webinars that we run for clients uh, on training tips and scenarios, um, but. In, in the, the obvious way to start this is which letters do you go for first? Well, you, you take the ones you receive the most of. So they're the ones that you code in first. So you start to chop away and get and get my boy GP taking some of that workload off you. So you'd have to think about which which order you want to process the letters and to code them into the system. Um, again, it's about a minute, 45 seconds to a minute once you've once you've done a few um, and you do have a finite give or take amount of letters. So once you've got the first 40, 50, 60, 70 in, it will be processing a lot in the background. And one could even argue once you've got the first 20 in, that's already going to have a significant impact. And it's not, not a huge amount of training. Um, is it additional work? I don't know. You're training them anyway. So you're not actually doing anything different to what you're doing now. You're just teaching instead of you doing it manually. Um, and then the next time you see that letter doing it manually. Uh, and then a bit later on on the day, you get three more copies of that letter doing it manually again each time. Um, you're doing it once. And then second time it won't ask you, it will just push it straight through. And then going back to the um, audit perspective, to the audit queries, that's got a full, full audit log uh, that you can validate that it is working appropriately. Sanjay, I'll pass back to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so 100% just play it and then you will see my GP filter on the first letter. It knows that it's been coded. We've mapped it ENT letter. Um, what it will do, it'll grab, obviously it's reading, it's reading the actual letter now. Um, it knows, as I say, it's one of one that's been pre-trained within its brain. Uh, you can see it says ENT clinic letter. That was the one that we, we coded first time around. Um, it will now bring up the Dockman uh, screen and then look to apply the fields that, that we've supplied it within the actual platform. And you can see here it's applying event uh, event date based on the logic that we've, we've given it. The description was ENT clinic letter. Um, et cetera, et cetera, and that's done. And you can start to see it, it sort of processes letters within sort of 30 seconds, I would say. Um, it's very quick uh, and it will just churn through them, basically. And just, just, just to add in, this is this is the automation tool using using it. This isn't a person that's using your computer. Going back to the description on how does it work, essentially, I've just paused it for a moment. It, it lives on a computer and it will use a computer in exactly the same way as a person does. So it's got its login, it's gonna press the right buttons in the right place of the screen. It's gonna follow all the way through the template. Coming back to IG questions, which which are um, can be covered later. Um, the machine that it uses to do that can be in your practice or it can be hosted externally, um, depending on, on security. 
and and your your prerequisites. So, like like I said before, this this not you're not going to see fireworks. What what you're seeing essentially is a is a, a machine given very very specific remit very similar approach to our normal pathology filing product it's looking for the letters it's been given permission to validate it's validating based on the way that it's been told to validate and filing and triaging to the appropriate people based on that anything it doesn't see it will say i'm not allowed i, I don't recognize that goes to an exceptions folder you open the exception folder and you say okay we've well, never seen that letter before or oh hospitals actually changed the format of that letter let me just code that one in Second time it sees that letter, it won't ask you again, and it just runs in the background. And all, all this data, as I said, once it's completed its run, it will then put all the data back into the activity. There's two, two types of um, uh, activity is a dashboard that gives you a nice metric as to how many it's um, how many it's filed, and the activity uh, page actually gives you a breakdown by actually document type um, and additional kind of line item information, detailed information that you can you can download and and uh, and review and reconcile. Okay, thank you, Sand. So we've got some questions here. Uh, I can see a hand up. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let me just come if you can bear with us for a moment. Let me just see which questions weren't answered. Um, we Sanj covered that one off just a moment ago. Thank you for that. Uh, we've covered that one, and then we can we can open it up to more questions. If we can keep them written into the chat, that that would be great. Uh, it just keeps everything a bit tidier for the for the webinar. Um, let me see where we got to here. How how is the data stored, and how long for, and what is done with it? And Sanj, I'll, I'll pass that one over to you. There was, yeah, there was just one before that in terms of can it sit on the pathology. So again, really good question. The way MyBot GP has been designed is um, it's a it's a one stop shop for automation. So pretty much between nine and eleven, you can be doing pathology filing. Then you can schedule uh, the, the the document to to run between eleven and two, etc. So throughout the day, through the different product sets that you that, that you subscribe to, you would literally have a, a helper, an automation bot running in the background doing different tasks throughout the day on that machine. So very much so it's scheduled to run different products throughout the day based on how you want to to, to schedule it. Okay, so Sam, so you want to say this one, how is data stored, how long for, and what is sure. done with it? So again, we, there's no uh, patient-related data stored. Um, the, the data is actually held within your machine because, as I say, the, the machine that it's, that it's used is installed on your machine, um, and it's all kind of high-level metric data. There's actually no personal identifiable information um, that uh, you know that, that the platform takes. Okay, thank you. Next question: Will it will it be able to restrict access? I assume that question. Yes. What 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 you're asking is, um, can you lock it down with the username and password as to who programs it? Yes, hundred um, percent. In the same as our normal pathology filing product, there'll be a master user who you decide who that is at practice level, um, who will have their own login, who can uh, log in and make changes. And then uh, as a as a, a more recent ICB requirement. We've also adhered to that, whereby you can have secondary users who can also have access and you can track any changes that they make. And for example, the master user might be away on holiday or, or long term stick, so you, you still have access to the tool. Um, and what's obviously important is there's a log of, of, of where changes. Um, is there software to redact? Um, if you it, within the tool, um, I'm not sure if that's a generic question or or a question for MyBot GP, but there is redacting software um, for MyBot GP. It's not not required as no data leaves your practice. It's it's going to read and and file appropriately in the same way as a person. Um, can it uh, identify doc documents uh, that need to be action urgently, i.e. Uh, i.e. mental health? Uh, Sanjay, I'll pass that, that yeah. over to you. Yeah. Yeah, really good question. So again, uh, the, what you do is what's the classifier for that? So you would have it classified as, for example, keyword as mental health, and you could then create a review or a task under a specific, um, uh, you know, create review person that could be picked up as mental health or sort of high priority type documents. So again, it's very malleable. It's how you want to design your document set and how you want to organize that within Docman. So very much so within the, the sort of configurations, you can do that. Goes back to what we were saying before. Um, 
configurable at practice level. You have different teams, different folders, different places you can action, you can allocate it. Um, what happens if there isn't an NHS number? Well, that then it will skip it and it will present it in the um, exceptions in the, in the exceptions folder. Uh, are you able to share your uh, DCBO one two nine log? Yes, of course, hundred uh, percent, with pleasure. Um, what happens, uh, Ernest? I've noticed that's you with the hand up. Is that is that the same question, or ha do you have a different question? I'm happy to to um, if you want to pop yours in the chat to answer that. Sorry, it's a, it's a it's a different question, but basically uh, it was to do with um, the bot acting as a human being. Uh, except that most clinical systems now we're trying to move away from passwords. So everybody has a smart card and is role based access control. So we know who it is. And then when this when something goes wrong, we'd like to know where the fault is and with whom. And we have to do audits, keystroke audits, etc. So your bot, do they how do they get identified? Do they get allocated a generic smart card number or what? OK, good question. Um, it's allocated a specific user user criteria. So anything that my bot GP touches will be will be linked with that login with that profile. So it will be it will be trackable right back to everything that it touches. It hasn't got a uh, generic or, or or floating login. It's a it's a specific login allocated to my bot GP. So it's identifiable. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Just just to, just to add on, there's a there's a user log as well within the platform, and it gives you a comprehensive as the footprint of that user within the platform when it logged in, what was changed, what it did, when it logged off, etc. So very comprehensive. Yeah, that was that was my concern. <laughs> thanks. Stuff. Thanks, Saj. So I love another good question here. It's part of the reason we 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 built my bot GP to be manu malleable at practice level. Um, we used to work a different way uh, several years back and saw that 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 primary care you're you're so nuanced. You need you need your own control. You need a product that you can you can manipulate yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know. So if we look here, what happens if you want to change its rules at some point and send to a different person because someone has left? No problem. You log in with your username and password and you can change it there you do not need to come back to us we don't need to uh, uh, say how many days it's going to change or or, or, it's, or you can't use it while it's being updated it's literally login username and password obviously there'll be protocols at practice level that you need to will, will be in agreement with the change which you're doing anyway and you can do that handwritten letters is uh, is, a, is an interesting one um, depends on on the handwriting I think is the easiest way to to answer that one. Um, if all of the handwriting is is perfect, um, it wouldn't be an issue, um, but it often isn't, especially not mine. So um, I think when it comes to handwritten letters, you need to make a, an assessment yourself if you're scanning that handwritten letter in yourself, whether um, you think whether you think you need to do that manually just to double check it's it's picked it up properly, uh, rather than at all um, if you can even read the handwritten again depending on on what it looks like. Uh, will the bot need to run on a standalone PC or can it run on an unimpeded on any PC? It needs its own computer. Um, is is best practice just to be left alone, uh, and that's that's not that it can't. Um, it's just that what we've seen in, in in our experience is if someone else is using it, they might not they might log it out, they might not turn it back in. Sam, do you wanna? Yeah, yeah I just I mean, it's a really really good question because I think um, what normally happens is clients are taking multiple products, and then if you think that it's running, so Docman, we've I've seen it, you know, running sort of five, six times a day on a round robin, then again, as I say, coming back to that example, nine to 11, it's doing pathology filing, 11 to one, it's doing doc, Docman, um, 11 to, sorry, three to five, it's doing repeat prescription. So if you start to think it's running throughout the day, being scheduled day and night, running that so so that's why we advocate a standalone pc so it's allocated to my gp to do those tasks that you set it for the day and night thanks Saj. Uh, can you add organizations yes um 100 uh, how much time would it take to set up and go live is this for the practice to do and set up the rules or do you do this we'll, we'll do it with you so coming back to how we work um, because it's a product now, think of my bot GP as a um, a downloadable product. So I don't know who who on this call have downloaded uh, an Amazon app or Netflix app or Spotify app or or Waze or or, or Google Maps. It's a five minute download, um, and then you actually have it, but it's blank. 
um, and then and then you tell it what you want to do with each letter. So we're estimating about a minute, 45 seconds to a minute to teach it to read each letter once you're up and running. Obviously, in the early stages, it will take a bit longer, um, but we will we will code letters with you. It's in our best interest to get as many letters in your system as quickly as possible. So you're seeing the best value of that. Um, so we'll help you as much as possible. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some training. But going back to the, the, the short overview that we shared before, it's, it's literally a matter of cutting copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Look here for the number, copy, paste, copy, paste each letter. So you'll get quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, and then obviously the second time it sees that letter, it won't ask you. So your, your um, number of different letters that it uses will get smaller and smaller, but, but we'll help you. So, so what, what if different if hospitals, uh, services format yeah, their letters, their ENT letters differently? Yeah, that's 100% why we built the tool. Um, yeah, Sandra. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you, again, what we've done in the tooling, really good question, um, is by letter, you can actually, I don't say hard code it, but you can actually say this letter for ENT is only associated to this hospital, and this letter, ENT letter two, is associated to this hospital. So you can cut it up multiple different ways so you can as i say you can it's very malleable that you can map it to one particular hospital or to generically so again um all, all doable within the platform it's coming coming back to your question um uh, i haven't got the person's name here it says heart's health but coming back to the question um each each one is formatted differently um so and, and that's what that's what you're looking for you're looking for the formatting so another good question here we have different categories for certain departments i.e orthopedics trauma choice and fracture uh, will it be okay to still create the different categories yep yep 100 percent in the same way that you would manually yes have you done a cost benefit analysis using automation v manual um that's a very good question so yes we have um but it changes from practice to practice, depending on patient demographics, sizes of practice, staffing issues, people on holiday. Um, we've averaged out about three minutes a letter, give or take. But if you think of that of that uh, question in detail, um, in order to do an exact cost benefit analysis of automation B manual, we would need 50 practices with with 50 with each one with exactly the same amount of staff with the same size patient list from the same demographic, um, with the same variety of letters coming in to, to try to get an approximation to, to, to get that exact figure. That's just not possible in primary care. Um, so what we do is take an average across multiple different practices, averaging out different practice sizes, different uh, and also uh, different approaches to um, how you um, file letters. You know, some have have teams that take responsibility, others don't. Others ask clinicians to do it, others don't. Uh, we have lots of clients who have a selection of letters where they they say um, they don't need to see them, they just file them based on a certain remit. And then we have other clients that would still like to see those letters. Um, but if you're looking at, uh, at an average, it's about three minutes um, per letter. Coming back to the calculation before, practice size of 9,000, average of 95 letters a day, that's 29,640 letters per year, every year, based as an average. After some types and categories that we've set up, is there a command we can give that if the letter cannot be categorized, the, can the, the system will name the letters seen and the specialty? Is this possible? Sanj, that sounds like a question for you. This one here. Sorry, my my uh, went went okay. What's it of some type? After some types and categories that we have set up, is there a command that we can give that if the letter cannot be categorized by the system, the name that will the name that is seen? Let's come back. On yeah, that. I'm not sure. Yeah. That, I mean, uh, coming back to what what it doesn't understand or what it cannot process, it will go into the exceptions. Um, so it, it comes back to can you categorize, uniquely classify and categorize that letter? Um, and then that's the key here. OK. How long does it take to run process approximately 100, 100 letters, Sanj? Um, I would give it about 30 seconds per letter. So. What are the maths on that? Is thirty sort of thirty to forty-five seconds per letter? As you can, as you saw the demo, it was very. I mean, that's and that's um, you know, but that obviously there are variances in terms of your internet speeds and computer speeds and you know how quickly emis and sort of document runs. But on average, I'd say about thirty to forty-five seconds. It brings up another interesting point. People people often ask about speed with automation, um, and 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 
the, the two things seem to be put together in the same bucket. Um, in reality, um, if something isn't being done by you anymore and it's just being run in the background um, and it's speed becomes less of an issue, it's more around robustness. Uh, so whilst the average is 30 seconds, if it was a minute, minute, minute and a half, um, running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, um, that's presumably more than enough capacity to process the letters quickly. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, no two clinic letters are the same. There might be an ENT letter for a DNA, another for no action, a third that needs a referral to be action. How does it differentiate between each? 100%. Yeah, coded yeah, that, was, that way. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, so the platform uh, caters for that, as as we understand that. Yeah, no two clinic letters are the same. So you can differentiate. Uh, so you can put ENT, uh, you can put a classification, a general classification of ENT letter. But then the key word is what differentiates it in terms of making a different letter, like a um, emergency discharge. You can have one emergency discharge, but it could be ten different things which will come through on emergency discharge. You would then, you would then teach my bot GP those 10 different iterations which are coming under emergency discharge so very much so it, 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 you're just about training and classifying it thank you thank you what happens if you wanted to so we've got a couple of minutes left we'll just finish off these questions really quickly some good questions it'd be nice to get through all of them if we can so so hopefully this is um, this is this is helping what happens if you want it to be sent to two groups pharmacist and the GP to review yeah that can be coded in so that's not, it's not, it's not a problem uh, some letters would need to go to GP reception team for actions. How would the bot know which ones to be seen by which members of the team? For example, not all ENT letters, uh, but some might. Again, coming back to, to how we descri how we've um, described it before, you would you would tell it. Uh, it would recognise the letter, and it would know which letters to send to the GP reception team for actions. And um, by by teaching it to recognise that letter, uh, because as you say, not all ENT letters need to be seen, but some might. There'll be keywords associated with that letter. Uh, does it work if you're scanning uh, documents directly into Docman? Yes, it does, 100%. Um, so you can scan them and it will pick up everything. Um, is there a timeline for when AI will be integrated? Um, there is, a, believe it or not, there is AI out there that can cope with this. Um, the challenge for everyone at the moment is it's still extremely expensive and it's way out of everyone's budget. Um, uh, so it's probably, I would say, this is why you have some people highlighting and not highlighting, but you're, you're looking at it's, it's still a good several years away uh, from being able to, to to make decisions. So the technology is there. Once the cost point is driven down to a point where it can become uh, affordable, i.e. not £100,000 or £150,000 or astronomical figures for these very complex algorithms, what will happen is it will then need to, to process millions of letters and then have the decisions reviewed at different levels to, to confirm that it is working accurately. But just as a side note, speed things are going, I'd be very surprised if at least larger portions of letters aren't, aren't being filed away um, by AI within the next five years. Uh, do you need to already be using documents to use this tool? Yes, um, we are actually work. We're very EMIS heavy at the moment. We do have system one tooling. We have pathology live in system one and we'll soon have a couple of other products live. Um, but we are also working on a workflow tool um, uh, as an equivalent for those of you who don't have document. Uh, how many letters can it file in one hour? About 30 seconds a letter, give or take, and it is a machine. So it will go one to the next, to the next, to the next, no breaks. Uh, will it pick the correct dates up on the demo as the seventh put filing on the tenth? Yes, it will. Uh, well spotted. That was a difference between the two days it was run. Uh, does it code any diagnosis from within the letter? We're not coding uh, diagnosis. This is for the this is for the for you to do. We're we're taking responsibility for the other piece and removing that time. Okay, we're over time now. Um, let's have a look here. We use. Preset templates for our common documents. Uh, so aside from the manual template sections, which take seconds off, how does this differ? We'd have to have a look at your templates um, and, and we can come just, back on that. Just on that, the templates <clears throat> pre-populate a handful of fields. It, it doesn't categorize the letter, pick up the NHS number, validate that it's the correct NHS number. Um, and then obviously you would set those templates up within the platform and then it would then physically file the letter, which again, the pre-templates don't do, so you're still having to, to, to click the button and actually action it. So, so that the actual difference is it, it processes it as opposed to just pre-templating it. 
Thanks, yeah. Ange. Uh, we charge a fixed price, essentially based on how many patients you have. So with all of our products, we, we have a um, setup cost, a yearly subscription cost for the, for, the, for the application, which doesn't matter what size the practice is, which is 499 per year. Um, and then we charge 30 pence a patient on an annual subscription plus that. We do offer trials. Our trials are paid trials. Um, so what we do is we take we, we take you on board for a three month um, trial. You pay for the three months, and then at the end of three months, if you if you want to proceed, you 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 continue. If not, you stop. Um, if it's on its own PC, will the PC need to be permanently logged in, or can the bot run when the PC is in sleep mode? No, it will need to be logged in. Uh, how many sites active piloted at the moment? Well, several hundred. Um, Will there be improvements to capability, intelligent processing, ENT letters, content, hoping for that over a period of time? That's, as we touched on a bit earlier, um, that, that's still a time away. Um, okay, so we've got the last couple of questions, I think, and then and then we'll, we'll round things off. What we'll do is we'll put this on our website and we'll also share a copy. If anyone wants to, to contact us for more information, then, then um, you know, please do. Uh, can the system identify likely inaccurate event dates such as six months in the past? Interesting question. Very interesting question. Not heard that one before. So you're no, asking if it, it picks up, if, if it receives a letter that's six months old, I believe that you want that picked up and flagged. We'll come back on that one. This is an interesting question. I haven't heard that one before. Thank you. Um, I'm still not clear how this helps a person checking instruction in a minute about cancer diagnosis. Da, 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 da. Um, we can have a call, we can go into some more detail. It depends how your practice is set up, how you're processing letters at the moment. Have you finished penetration tests yet? As from a shared list, this has not been completed. Yep, we have finished 100%. If you want to share that with us, it'd be interesting to see what you're looking at. Thank you for that. Um, is there a discount for larger PCNs? We can have a conversation about that. Um, is 30 pence a patient for each different automation for the full suite notes per product? Uh, and where do we find this video on your website? Give us a couple of days. Um, we just need to, to uh, take out everybody's name uh, and stuff, and then we'll have it posted on our website and we'll send out a link. Brilliant. Well, that draws us to a conclusion. We've gone a little bit over time. Thank you uh, for, for joining us today. And uh, if you want any more information, please let us know. Thanks very much.